I'm so freaking tall. I need some quick and easy storage solutions for items in my shop, such as some bags and some rags. I would also like some hooks so I can hang my apron. So I've drawn up something in SketchUp that I think is gonna work. I'm gonna make it out of MDF because that's what I have laying around. When I'm trying to bang out a quick project, I work straight from the plans and cut to dimension. What I usually do in SketchUp is I duplicate all the parts and I'll lay them out in order next to each other so I keep all the dimensions in similar places. This keeps my mind organized as I'm working quick so that I can avoid resetting the fence multiple times and this leads to more accurate dimensions as well. I don't condone using your laptop around your table saw because the dust is probably not good for it, but I just wanted to get it done quick. These are going to be the size of the case and I start by beveling the top at a 15 degree angle using my miter gauge. Then I can cut a groove for the back at the router table. After marking out the bottom profile of the case sides, I can cut them out. I'm so good at hand sawing MDF. After cutting out the first side, I can trace it onto the second side and cut it out. I'm using that angle I cut on the top of the sides to set my table saw bevel angle and I use that angle to cut the bevels on the lid and the top rail. Speaking of the front rails, I use a box joint blade in my table saw to cut the quarter inch groove. Segwaying into the panels that will go in those grooves, I cut out some quarter inch MDF for those. Back to using the box joint blade and the table saw, I tilted it to a 45 degree angle and I'm just using the corner of it to cut the V grooves for the panels. And they look kinda like that. After some quick measuring, I can cut the dados for the bottom shelf. Box joint blades don't cut quite as wide as a dado stack can, but it sure leaves a smooth cut. I also take this opportunity to cut the stopped grooves for the front panels. Using one of the sides, I can trace out the profile for the bottom of the middle divider. After cleaning that up, I can cut the notches for the top and bottom rails. Back at the router table, I can cut the grooves again for the front panels. I need to measure, mark, and cut a notch for the back rail. This time I didn't have the box joint blade set up, so I just used the speed tenon method with the regular blade on my table saw. Boom! Oh, like a glove. Quick decision, I rounded the corners on the bottom shelf. Speaking of rounding corners, this is my favorite roundover bit for this application. It is a 3 30 seconds inch radius roundover bit by Amana Tools. It has this tiny 3 16 inch bearing on top, which means you can get really close into those corners without having to do that much cleanup afterwards. This isn't the final assembly, but I'm going to countersink some screws to get it together temporarily before I take it apart for paint. And I did all that to round over this one edge. Then I can give all the parts a sand before pro And now I go live in the field with Tired Scott. Now that I've sanded all the parts, I can begin to prime and paint everything that's going to be on the inside. Thanks, Tired Scott. I'm using Zinsser Bin's shellac-based white primer for this. It works really well for painted MDF projects. I 
I'm using some leftover cabinet paint that I have. I like to use this product that extends the drying time so that the brush strokes level out. And I like it even more when it goes in the paint. The next morning, I can hang up my sweater and get to work assembling. First, some contemplation, and go. Gonna use some Bondo to cover the screw holes because I love the smell. I believe woodworkers should explore all the different possibilities for finishing their projects. I don't think it's a crime to cover up wood grain with paint and I think paint can actually look very good for certain applications. If you're primarily building furniture for your own home and you only use clear finishes, then your home could end up looking like a monument to wood grain, which doesn't really fit in with a contemporary home aesthetic. I get that painting can be more time consuming and difficult than applying a simple clear finish. In fact, this cabinet took about five to six hours to construct while the painting honestly took almost 12 hours. Now that the paint is finally done, I can mount these hooks for the bottom and some hinges for the lid. So that Scott was lying, I'm actually not quite done with the painting yet. I used a self-centering drill bit for these holes and I'll be honest, I pretty much just eyeballed it. So off camera, I actually mortise these hinges. I didn't film it because I was grumpy that I had to mortise these hinges. To mount the cabinet on the wall, I had four pre-drilled holes with screws partially screwed in so that on the back, the tips of the screws were poking out a little bit. I put it up to the wall with a level where I wanted it, and I just gave it a little shove to mark those screws into the drywall. And with that, one more shop organization project is complete. Since moving in here last year, I've had a huge laundry list of projects to tackle for this shop, and so there's gonna be lots of storage solution videos yet to come. That being said, please like this video if you in fact liked it, and if you liked it even more, then maybe hit the subscribe button.